congratulations to Emma and everybody who's organised today. We really do need to amplify our voice on this whole issue. We absolutely need to defeat this incredibly irresponsible piece of legislation that is now before the federal parliament. Yeah. My my colleagues in the Federal Parliament, we have five Green Senators, will vote against it. What we need to ensure is that some sanity starts to prevail and that we win the numbers. And that means, I think, actually embarrassing Labor and the Coalition that this is no way to protect children. Because that's the justification that they're running uh, in terms of why they need to censor the um, internet in this way. So I do urge all of you when you leave here today to take away a commitment to sign the petitions, to write your letters, to write your emails, ring up the politicians. I can tell you as an MP, having that public pressure really does make a difference. Now, right now, what we're hearing is that in the Coalition and Labor parties, there are a number of MPs who do not support this legislation and are saying to their leaders, to Mr Abbott and Mr Rudd, this is madness, it will not work, it will make us look like a fool internationally, let alone amongst Australians once they catch on. So we're hearing that that debate is starting in the federal parliament. We just need to help give it legs and that's why your messages are so important. For the, for the Greens, we see that there is sort of two broad areas in which to look come at this from. One is the issue of ensuring that young people are not exposed to ex extreme pornography and extreme violence, and the other one is the issue of freedom of speech. Now, first off, on the issue of young people, the message there is really simple. The internet, the, the proposal that this legislation would put in place, effectively censoring the internet, is not going to provide protection to anyone, let alone children. If anything, it will make it worse. And why it will make it worse is because it's going to give parents this false sense of security. Oh, it's solved. The government solved that problem, that, that my kids can go and look at the internet any time at all. Now, what we need to do here, and interestingly, okay, and I'll come to this in more detail, the government is doing this. It's actually just providing the education so young people can make the informed decisions themselves. That's what's needed here. Not just having a big brother approach where you're going to shut down huge sections of the internet. It really can't work, and, it, and, and I really think that that is the essence. Because as you know, politics comes down to a five second grab. We've got to get our message down to be really simple. And when they say to us, I want to protect the children, we say to them, your internet censoring is going to make it worse. It's not going to protect children. It can lull parents into a false sense of security. And we've got to get that message across. People have often just sticking with that point of actually likened it to me like putting a seatbelt on your kids. Yeah, we put a seatbelt on them when they get in the car and when we put a seatbelt on them in terms of the internet, it's not actually about this censorship, it's about them making informed decisions about how they actually travel. So we do see that that's a really important point. I think it's also worth remembering that the annual report of the Australian Communications and Media Authority in its 2008 report to the government, um, I should have said it's worth remembering, I didn't know about it myself until I read about it recently in preparing for today, but their conclusion in that report is worth noting. And they said that education is the most effective method of addressing risks associated with illegal contact online. Education is the way to go. And again, it reinforces that message that the other speakers have given. You can't have this big brother approach. It will not, will not work. And what's interesting here is that's a report to the government. They've been told that. We know they've been told by a lot of their MPs who actually understand how the internet works. They've been told about this by official government bodies, but they're pushing on with this censorship. The other big reason for the Greens in why we oppose this plan is it because it erodes freedom of speech. And this is extremely serious. What would happen in Australia if this, uh, this legislation goes through will put us on par with countries like Saudi Arabia and China. 
Now, the government tries to say, oh, well, it's happening in some European countries. There's a couple of European countries that do censor the net, but in no way to the extreme level that the Australian government is proposing. As you heard so clear, clearly from Zen, the, the degree of censorship would be extreme. It effectively is unworkable in what they're achieving, but it would be extremely serious. And this is what it's worth is just considering. Let's remember that although our freedom of speech has been eroded enormously in Australia, and I'm referring there to uh, many, uh, much of the law and order and the terrorist legislation that really has undermined our freedom of speech. However, for all that weakening of that legislation, the authorities still need to get um, agreement if they're going to check your emails or tap your phone. There still is some protection there. Yes, it's been weakened. Yes, people like the Greens and many civil liberty organisations have been critical, but there is some protection. This legislation goes through. The authorities then have the right, without anybody knowing and without having to get any referring to a judge or anything, check on packages of information that we may choose to put on websites. That is one of the most extreme forms of censorship that has ever been thought up in, in any country. And let's remember that what it's really eroding also, as well as our freedom of speech, is our privacy. And privacy, as with freedom of speech, are fundamental rights. So they're the two broad areas in, in, of how the Greens approach this. Now, I mentioned earlier about what's happening in, within sections of the government in dealing with this issue that does trouble many people about young people coming across, being exposed, whatever, to inappropriate material on the web. And I've given emphasis already about the issue is educating young people how they handle that. Well, interestingly, the government is already doing that, particularly in New South Wales. The Department of Education and Training has some programs that we think should receive more publicity, more support. And it's actually, to my mind, how I would like democracy to flourish in terms of informing young people so they're the ones who can make the choice. They're already savvy in so many ways about the internet and then they're also savvy about making these decisions. So just to run through some of the programs that the Department of Environment, sorry, the Department of Education and Training has. It produces fact sheets with cyber safety facts for young, young children, teenagers and their parents. They've also got a technology guide for parents who are actually concerned how their children are interacting with the technology. So I, I must admit I haven't looked at that website but I've been told that it's quite good um, in, in particularly helping parents understand about social networking so they're not super alarmed and they can start a conversation with their children. That's what it's about. It's not about just being having this real sledgehammer approach and a censorship approach. And what it's also about in this context, it's about setting boundaries. I have three children myself. That's what you do when you're a parent, you set boundaries. And as one gets older, those boundaries start to fall away as the young person is, it's up to them to how to make their decisions. Interestingly, the federal government itself also has something similar to the New South Wales site. And what the Greens are saying about this legislation that will cost a fortune if it was put in place. As you could hear from the other speakers, it's complicated, it will involve layers and layers of um, internet censorship and activity that I'm still trying to get my head around. But clearly it's going to be very costly. That money should be directed into a whole number of online education programs, programs at schools. That's how that money should be used. So finally, why is the government doing it? That's the $64 million question. They've, pr they've promised, um, Mr Rudd, at, t as, at times when he was in the opposition, promised that they would protect young children from the evils of the web, and he had one of those raves that some of these politicians do from time to time. Uh, so I think on the one hand, you can see he's in a bit of trouble with uh, Mr Abbott at the moment. 
there is a lot of concern that he will be wanting to get the runs on the board with some of these promises that he's made to show that he is a man that can deliver. He's a Prime Minister that actually can get results.